welcome to the Arrest or Mimics podcast with your host Ben Talon. Hello and welcome to Arrest All Mimics. I am Ben Talon, your host. This is the Illustration Limited podcast celebrating original thinking and creative innovation. What have you been thinking, guys? Have you been enjoying the show? Let me know some thoughts. Um, it's a new thing. Um, like most things that I get out there and do, I have this tendency to get quite restless creatively. And I start writing books and blogging and drawing and painting and doing set design. And sometimes I get these, I go on these massive guilt trips because I think, oh God, where's your focus? You're supposed to be an illustrator and, uh, you know, I don't know where broadcasting came from. I don't know where writing started, but I guess I love all of it, which is why I'm trying to do this and bring you all these outrageously interesting people. So today we've got Robert James Clark, who is... A friend of a friend who I was put in touch with, but I knew Robert's work from a little while ago, and there's, there's quite a comedy story, quite an embarrassing story behind this one. Um, I'm a massive dog fan, and when I started illustrating back in 2008, um, I used to just get these lists of Excel spreadsheets together and create these databases from things like the Artists and Writers Yearbook and the Association of Illustrators and kind of pay for these contact lists and just inexplicitly send out my work to anyone and everyone. But at the top of the list were, were obviously things that I was interested in and the people that I wanted to work for. And somewhere along the way, uh, in amongst the WWEs and the, the When Saturday Comes Football Magazines and Leeds United, all the things I was passionate about, dogs crept in. <laughs> and um, So Dogs Today read its head and for whatever reason I got it in my head that, that this was going to be like you know one of the first clients and I could do these amazing dog illustrations and and it did it kind of showed a little bit of interest but I think when they saw the contemporary style that I was working with using inks and loose paints they um they, they didn't want that they had a very much a, a photographic approach and it was you know it was dog owners smiling with dogs or dogs running in a field looking really happy as, as tends to be the way you know the kind of the kind of shit that you get on dog food cans and Troy in Aldi and stuff like that so um, so they kind of told me no, you know, you're on file, we'll get in touch if your stuff comes up, but for now it's, it's not kind of where we're at, and I thought oh, you know, well, it should be, and, and it will be so I kind of kept knocking on the door and I got, I got told to never contact them again in the end, can you believe that? I, I pissed them off so much, there was such persistence that um, they had to break my heart and tell me, no, no dog illustrations for you boy, Um <laughs> get out, get in the get in the backyard. So um, so there we go. But ever since I've uh, you know every now and again I come across like a cool dog illustration or a, you know a photograph that makes me laugh. And I guess it's just growing up, being having you know having this crazy Staffordshire Terrier, which is what I had. So along the way I came across an artist called Robert James Clark, and he does these terrific dog portraits for their owners. And it's become his thing. It's become what he, he does a lot of other things. He does abstract painting. And he, he's got some amazing ideas, which we discussed uh, in, in his studio in, in, in Red Hook in Brooklyn. And so I had to track this guy down. It turns out a friend knows him in New York. Uh, Robert's from Luton, originally, just outside London. And my friend was like, look, Robert's such a character. He's amazing. Like His dogs are great. He's painted uh, dogs for Kate Moss. He's painted Kath Kidston's dog. He's, he's painted uh, Fergie from Black Eyed Peas' dog. And I just like, wow, this, what a career. Like, what, a, what a thing to carve out your name for. So anyway, it turns out Robert's been living in New York for a year. Um, so I set up out to his studio and, you know, we kind of got into Brooklyn City Centre. And uh, I was with my brother over in New York. So we... I sat out and said, look, I'll, I'll be back in a couple of hours. I'm going to go and visit this guy's studio. We're going to have a chat for Arrest All Mimics and, and I'll be back. So I kind of walked all the way up there and you go through uh, kind of Brooklyn Heights, this really kind of beautiful area with all these, you know, like the kind of New York streets you see on the films with all the trees and really quite suburban and the big houses. Uh, well, yeah, that. Um, so I kept on right through that stuff and then you hit the, the Brooklyn Express and Queens Highway and underneath it, you kind of walk across and it just suddenly gets really sketchy and I was like, oh God, what's, you know, heading into Red Hook now. But anyway, right on the corner, um, there's an open garage door and there's Robert and I recognise him from his profile picture and it was one of those moments where, you know, I'm like, that's definitely him. And he looks across and he's like, there's me with a backpack and, and a hoodie looking in these sort of three quarter length shorts looking ridiculously English. And anyway, Robert's face lights up and, and away we go. It's, it's like, it's like we met for the first time. So we're going to be discussing all the, all that, you know, all that work and, and who he's painted these amazing dog pictures for and how that happened and how 
studying at Central St. Martin's in the 1980s in London, uh, took him on this journey where he ended up becoming known for this and how he's doing gigs, painting dogs and their owners in galleries in Chelsea and and you know his his thoughts on on the art world today and and so and you know the social media kind of watering down you know information overload and and kind of taking away what's really good you know and and taking away uh, sort of quality control in art so we're going to discuss that you know the importance of criticism in education and and competition and many other things so uh let's get stuck into that conversation as i said let me know this is a new thing like everything else that i've been trying so get back to us on the twitter at arrest all mimics hit us up on the email arrest all mimics at gmail.com and contact us via illustration limited which is illustrationweb.com uh well you know this is kind of crucial that we know what you guys are thinking and who you want to get on the show what you'd like to hear about uh is the podcast too long is the podcast too short do you want do you want it more often let us know just hit us up anything at all Anyway, let's get down to it. Um, and I com- my conversation with Robert. I'm here with Robert James Clark. We're in Brooklyn, near the Prospects uh, Projects. What is it? <laughs> it's a pro- <laughs> yeah, the, well, the projects. We're actually in Red Hook. <laughs> right. Um, we're in Red Hook, so uh, which is um, really close to the BQE, yeah. um, and uh, quite close to Van Brunt, which is uh, sort of. The whole area is kind of on, it's got water on two sides. Yeah. And of course a nice big Ikea as well. So. Yeah, and the Ikea's got a ferry, right? And the ferry from the Ikea ferry to, and it takes to Manhattan. So that's nice. Brilliant. Mm. <laughs> and um, I, I always let the guests tell, uh, tell what they do with rather than me sort of badly paraphrasing it, but you paint dogs, right? Well, I'm known for the dogs. I mean, I've, I've so when I first started painting, I did kind of, you know, when I was at uh, college, I, I painted rather large, Kind of abstract stuff, and yeah. then of course um, you leave college, and because uh, in those days everything was uh, was kind of funded. So, and and uh, you used to get money for your art uh, materials. You used to get money for your canvas or your paint brushes, um, and you used to get a grant. Wow! This was nineteen eighties though. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you could paint pretty much any size you liked. And of course, everyone painted big because yeah. that seemed to be the thing in the eighties. You know, with the kind of I think new spirit of painting was in eighty three, which was the Schnabels and Mark Luperts and all these big, big, big painters. Yeah. So that was kind of a big influence. Uh, but of course, the moment you come out there and, and realise that it's costing, you know, probably two hundred, three hundred quid in the eighties just to make a canvas. Yeah. Then you know, and you've got no actual place to sell it. Well, I guess that's the flip side, isn't it? If, it's, if, it's, if it is funded, then I suppose you are kind of hidden a little from, from the reality of that. Well, that's right. The truth is you're cocooned. So you kind of, you're in there thinking, great, yeah, brilliant. And then you come out and, and you think you're going to get picked up. I mean, yeah. there's a story about George Kondo. You know, George Kondo is quite a... Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he got picked up by Bruno Buschenberger. And Bruno bought everything. He bought, like, scraps of paper. He, you know, so he became a millionaire overnight, uh, George Kondo. Wow. In, in about 1984, I think it was. <laughs> he used to play guitar. He's a left-handed guitarist, George Condon. Yeah. So, it, you know, he... he And you kind of had that. Because my friend was his um, assistant in Paris in uh, 86. And you hear this story, and I was like, yeah, that's what's going to happen to me. And I think we all kind of thought we were going to come out and someone was going to buy all our work, we would become millionaires. And of yeah. course, it's, the reality is, that's not going to happen. I think there's still a bit of that in in terms of uh, I went I went to new expectations. Des- yeah, I went to new designers recently in London to sort of push my book there, and uh, you there were you got the sense that this dawning had happened on a lot of the students, where it's like yeah, oh the, shit, this the, is it. The truth you know? is, when you come out, you're it's it's a bit like being in prison, really, you know. But and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's that you're kind of you're inside, you can't get out. You can look out the window and you see stuff, but you know, as soon as you come out, you're like fuck, I've got to make some money, and you know, and you yeah. end up getting a job. Yeah. Before you know it, the job overtakes your life, and, and, and you know you don't get a chance to do what you actually want to do. What yeah. you, you know what you train to do. Really. Well, yeah, I, mean, I worked at Waterstones Bookstore um, after graduating. Yeah, but that's quite an interesting place. To it work. was all right. I mean, I was in good in sending books on trolleys up to the top. <laughs> By that point, I was a bit sick of it. But um, but then it was. It did seem to be one of those places that was full of people, either on their way back from a dream or, or, or yeah, chasing yeah. the dream. You yeah. know what I mean? And everyone was a little caught up in that full time thing where all of a sudden it's like I'm not going to have to work. And yeah, and I need yeah, and I need to make the money. I need to pay yeah. pay the rent, and you know, uh, I need to get drunk. 
yeah. you know, <laughs> well, get all it. those things and then you know then you get drunk and then you don't feel like working you know? so <laughs> yeah. uh, before you know it it's like yeah it's, it's, it's a vicious sir <laughs> somebody uh, somebody sent me a message recently who read the book and said my favourite line so far is um a bit when I said hangovers are destructive but conversations in pubs are constructive in the arts but it's a really hard balance to strike successfully. Yeah, yeah, try, yeah try, try to the, the stuff you come up with when you're pissed <laughs> is so brilliant yeah. but you know unless you've got a recording device you fucking don't remember it do you? you go oh, yeah I had a really great idea what, the, so what was it? Was it? No I've got no idea in the morning <laughs> you know and I, I think that, did, that I think what's, what I found Recently, well, so I suppose in the last few years since I've actually been focused on on, on, on painting, is is uh, you get up and you do the work, and, mm. and you just got to get up and do the work, regardless of your state. You, you know? have to, you have to. There's so many that I've battled through, and and I, luckily they're less now, they're few and far between. But you, you have to. It's just like yeah. otherwise. Yeah, I mean, because you know you're self-employed. You know? Yeah, that's yeah, it. No one's you, paying. You have to motivate yourself. It's it's very yeah. very difficult. Yeah. So, where are you from originally, Robert? Uh, originally Luton. Yep. Born in Luton. Okay. Uh, 1963. Yeah. Um, they knocked down a hospital this year later, so well, yeah. that's gone. <laughs> um, not far from Kenilworth Road, actually, where Luton play. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, then, um, yeah, I really didn't... I was, just, I, I was always quite good at art at school, you know. So, I was, yeah. I was, so like, we had this really nice guy... Uh, teacher um, and it was two of us one, one guy called Peter Clark and me called Robert Clark mm. we were the only two one in the in the in the, um, in the class that were any good at art so we ended up sort of competing a lot and we, we used to win competitions he used to win one one week I'd win yeah. you know he's got a lot of Parker pen sets yeah. do you know what I mean the yeah. kind of stuff yeah. you used to get in the 70s Parker pens were cool you know those were yeah, quite sexy I had a query from Parker pens recently to try to write some sentences in a calligraphic color, color nice. style yeah. it didn't come off in the end it was, it was a bit too sketchy with my style but um, it was an interesting one <laughs> but yeah the, the, I mean do you remember that they did this kind of like it was like a space pen type it was silver with kind of it was quite sort of weird looking thing I think I do remember that yeah. yeah silver with a little blue thing on it it was really cool yeah and I won two sets of those yeah yeah I was really I was like <laughs> what, yeah what, the, but seeing as that's come up how do, you, how do you feel about competition because I, one of my bugbears recently has been there's, there seems to be this like this cotton wool psychology particularly in Britain at the minute where it's almost like can't offend or upset anyone so, you know and, and that seems to have crept into sort of education to the point where I've got a friend who's a primary school teacher, and I know this in secondary school as well, where parents are coming in and kicking off, you know, because the kid's not made the football team, and it's almost like they should be in there as default. And oh, I blame David Beckham. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's, yes. It is. It's like, you know, but I think parents can push their kids, but if your kid hasn't got any talent, right, yeah. and I'm, I, you know, and I think this is, this is true in a lot of things, is, is, or if you're paying for your education, mm. right, and you're paying top dollar for your education, uh, you know, at a certain age, which, which you know, after after school it does. Yeah. You have to pay for it. Yeah. Um, you're expect you, you you expect to get a good grade. I mean, I got I think I got a two I got a two two. Yeah. But I got a third for my thesis, which was on Batman, which I didn't have any th- didn't have any thesis tutorials, right? Um, and so I lost I lost. I mean, you know, if I my, my so and I actually got two one for painting, so that was a two, you know. So yeah. But I got two two overall. Yeah. But. I wasn't going to kick up a fuss. There was a few people failed, but you know, people used to fail in those days. There'd be a, there'd be like two firsts, yeah, a load of two ones, a few two twos, and a load of fails. Yeah, you know, it does. It, the thing is, it doesn't matter. It's like it, no one's ever asked me what grade I've got. They only go on the strength of your portfolio and your character at that well, point, and, that, and that's all you ever should go on, you know. And also, how do you learn if you if you don't learn that you're not any good at something? How are you going to find what you are good at? You know. Well, this is this is the problem, and I think I think people are kind of under delusion that people, you know, they're, 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 I mean, I'm sorry, I look on Facebook sometimes, and I look on Instagram, and you know, I, I see images that people are going, "This is fantastic!" They're getting like a thousand likes, and it's like it's a piece of shit. Yeah. What at what point do you think that that's yeah. a good piece of you know? It's badly drawn, badly painted, technically crap. Yeah. You know, you have to learn your yeah. trade before you can actually become. Of course, you do. Yeah, I mean, it's like fucking up. So, and I think that's a problem with a lot of na- now is is that there is no, yeah, there's no there's no level of, of, of sort of, yeah. St- I'm, what am I trying to say? I'm, I'm, there is well, there has to be teaching. There has to be critique. Yeah, and you have to yeah. know, and you have to know where you need to improve. It's all, and you you're not going to progress otherwise. It's like. Uh, there's, um, I've been chatting to a few YouTubers recently, and this is something I've actually been trying to sort of 
find a way to get this known and out there. But s some university courses now have started to drop the interviewing process, um, force the tutors to drop that and make these sort of moral decisions that we need to get, because of the tuition fees, they have to make up a certain Yeah, yeah, so they, they, it's about money. So yeah. they compromise, I mean, abandoning quality control, um, which is it, which is so immoral, not only on the tutors, but on the college tutors who've worked to get those kids to a level to, so that they can go to university or whatever else. But if all it comes down to is that you represent nine grand a year, fuck. Well, like, well that, is, that is bollocks. Yeah, it's, and, 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 it's really angry. Uh, I'm trying yeah. to, I was, I was talking to national newspapers at one point in terms of actually putting together a piece but we actually we couldn't find enough sort of tutors to speak out about it because, because they didn't their, want to lose their jobs, jobs the I know and absolutely it's such a shit sort of situation but then you know it's like as I'm sure you'll you'll agree the same thing it's just all those all those bleak days and all those knocks along the way it's like you, you, it, you're it, so it, glad, it, glad it, of it, it now it changes it changes the way you see yourself it changes the way you work goes it, you know it mm. You know, it's not an easy path. It's it's not an overnight. No one's an overnight success. It's just everyone knocks their bollocks out, and then yeah. and then all of a sudden you hit a kind of place, and someone goes, "Oh, that's good," and you fit there, and th and then yeah. you're doing what you always wanted to do. But you know, yeah. it's taken you a long while, you yeah. know, a long time. To and get you learn it. to see you learn to see beyond the initial things, don't you? As well, it's like you know, you think, "Oh, hang on a minute." There's a reason people have bought into that part of my work, and and, yeah. and actually, suddenly, there's more ma method. Yeah. Then, but well, I mean, it's taken me. I've been doing it seven years full time now, about ten years in total since uni, and only now do I feel like there's actually a little bit of direction moving forward, rather than looking at it all in yeah. hindsight. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's the thing with my dogs. It's exactly the same. I mean, I, I you know, I I'd had quite a few shows, had a few one man shows in the nineties. Quite abstract stuff, kind of you know stuff I really loved doing, you know stuff yeah. that cost me money to yeah. do, you know, and the heart was there. But then I had a job, uh, so it was always a half cocked. Yeah, could have been better. Yeah, always a little bit regretful of, of of not spending enough time on it. Yeah, and it was only when I started doing the dogs, funnily enough, that yeah. I focused purely on the dogs for for as as you say, probably five, six, seven years now. Yeah, yeah, that I found some kind of. Uh, Real one, identity re, re, well, well, identity for me, recognition, uh, you know, lot, lot, the things that come with just focusing on one thing. And, it, and I mean, I do lots of things, you know, I, I, I do lots of animals, I do like sort of little abstracty things, you know, I paint big pictures. But I'm known for the dogs, and the dogs has kind of got me, you know, got me to, to where I am today, which is which means I can have a dog show and an abstract show yeah. at the same yeah. time, funnily yeah. enough. Whereas before, you know, People going, oh, you do this, you do that, you're a bit random. People like pigeonhole people, so I mean, yeah. that's a difficult. It's funny, isn't it? I'm, I'm the similar thing. I do a real wide range within my style, but what's what's really, as I've seen now over the years, is has caught on is the human element. It's a very loose style. There's a lot of unfinished areas, mistakes, yeah. and it took really good art directors like Dave Hilton, who we know, to yeah. actually go, I love that. You should push that. You should really yeah. go for Work that. Work on that. And yeah, again, yeah. you go, okay, he's got 25 years experience. He, yeah. he sees something there, and and you act on it, and then all of a sudden then people connect with that and I mean your dog paintings I love them there's so much there's such a personality in every single one of those images which there has to be for dogs but it's well, it, well that, that's the thing with the, the, the thing with the dogs right is when I first started doing them was, they were slightly more messy slightly more you know um, mm. sort of more f sort of fucked up yeah um, and a little bit more abstract so you know in a way because the thing is like I, I look at painting as as Every single mark you make is an abstract mark. It's not actually. It's not like you're just painting, putting a brush around, and it becomes an eye. Oh, of course There's not. like 25 different things just to make an eye. So they're all abstract in a way. Mm. The fact is that when you actually see them, they're figurative. Yeah. You know. So when I first started doing it, people really liked the dogs. But then someone said, "Oh, can you make it look more like my dog?" And I went, "Well, for fuck's sake! I mean, you know, if you want me to, you know." So that's at that point I was like, "Shit, I'm gonna have to charge more for this." And, and then it got into the point where I, I became so fucking tight. I had to relearn to paint tight, you know, like mm. uh, sort of to the point where I was, it became more like, almost like a photograph. And some clients are still like that now. And I, I, I normally say, don't you want, I'll do it in an email saying, don't you want to get a photograph done? Yeah. Because I'm a, I'm a painter first and a dog painter second. Yeah. And what I first and, and you know the artist was out the window yeah. so I had this conversation recently there's um, a girl a lady called Becca Smith who's a fantastic portrait artist in where I had my studio in mm. London and uh, her stuff's it comes just 
close enough to not quite, you know, you, you can very much tell, the, you can see the human element, the brush strokes, but the, the, but the detail and the beauty in every part of it, you really admire. But I was having that conversation and we went to the BP Portrait Award yeah. you know, and I said, like, I, I have a great admiration of good photography, so I would, well, yeah. I would much prefer a beautiful yeah. photograph blown up, all the Absolutely. great print, everything. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. But I want to see... I want to see unfinished air. I want to see the, the human touch and, and yeah, what, and like thought, you said about the eye and the twenty five. I want to see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the thing is, it's you know, paint is is fluid, right? It moves. It's got a sort of, you know, the moment you see. I mean, like you know, there's a lot of fucking dog painters out there doing a lot of yeah good work. I'm not, you know, I yeah. don't diss that, you know, but it's Sunday paintings. As far as I'm concerned, mm. it's like you sit there and you take. I don't know. However long it takes to paint someone's dog in it perfectly, it's not. And then you look at the photograph next to it, and it's exactly the same as the photograph. You're like, that's brilliant. Well done. That's great. But yeah. that's copying. And why don't you just fucking yeah. have the Give photograph? Give it some, its own thing. Yeah. That's... And I'm not, you know, and I'm, and I've got to the point where I'm actually doing stuff that yeah. is almost like a fucking photograph, and I'm like pissed off. Yeah. I am pissed off, and I t- and I sort of. You can't tell clients, especially when you're charging quite a lot of money. And you lose, I think you lose the love then, don't you? When you're striving to make something and you're over-laboring and you're over-laboring, yeah. when that's when I, I personally then, I, I lose the love when it comes to that point, yeah. which it really does with my style, but every once in a while, it's like, can you tie it up a little bit? Can you just, have, yeah. and I think, why did you commission me? Yeah. Have yeah. you not seen yeah. my portfolio? Yeah, exactly. Look, look, at, look, at the, look at the work. This is what you're going to get. Yeah. It might not look like you think, you know, but if you want it, Super tight, then then it gets someone else to do it. And I've told people, people to go. doing that. Yeah. There's loads of people doing doing everything. Yeah, well, of course. Right, yeah. So how did how did it get started? I mean, how did you? What was what were the first steps into doing these dogs? I read. Am I right in thinking you got attacked by a dog when you were young? Is yeah, that, I did. Yeah. I got. Well, I was oh, in a, in a park in Luton. Right, it's a big big park. <laughs> right, and, and uh, I was on my I was on a uh, stabilizer bike. Yeah, with my granddad, and he was pushing me along, and I, I was like, you know, trundling along. I think it was two and a half or something. I was <laughs> yeah, saying, yeah. and this. Fucking great big German Shepherd Oof. leapt on me, knocked, knocked me off, and then look, literally straddled me and just barked at me. Like oh, that. That's terrifying. I, I, I was screaming, and uh, and then the rest of my life, I was fucking super scared of dogs to the point where if I saw a dog on its own walking down the street, because you know, there was, you know, in the, I suppose back in the 60s and the 70s, yeah, how many dogs just wandered I've randomly always, around in the, the 80s, place. When I was yeah, growing yeah. up, dogs wandering around, yeah. yeah. So I used to go, oh shit, and at that, I'd have a, like a t- sort of twenty minute detour to get home yeah. because of the dog, you know, yeah. and that's how bad it was. And then, and then it was only in about two thousand that I was uh, my ex girlfriend decided that she wanted to get a dog, and then we got this dog, and we went to this puppy club thing uh, where you kind of sit around like this about twenty five years, <laughs> right? <laughs> and there's all these dogs, so like. There was a Staffordshire Bull Terrier puppy, quite funny, you yeah. know, called Nike. I love Nike. Yeah, called Nike, <laughs> right? And then, and then there was this Basset Hound that, had, like, the previous week had swallowed a, a, a coat hanger, right? So it was all, it was all like bandaged <laughs> up and stuff, right? And then there was a couple of Yorkies. There was a couple of, I think it was a Chihuahua, and, 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 so, and it, there was something. There was, there were, anyway, you pick these dogs up, and you put your hands in their mouth because they were puppies of like twelve mm. weeks or whatever. <laughs> they weren't going to bite you because the teeth weren't, you know. So you're like. And then I kind of got this whole kind of the fear just sort of left me, mm. you know, and it was kind of strange. And and then I kind of had the dog, you know, and, and it was kind of sweet. And and you know, it's funny having a dog. It's a certain responsibility that goes with the dog, yeah, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so um, we uh, so we had the dog, and and it was good, and. And then at that time, I was doing some. Um, she was an interior designer, so she was doing show flats. You know when, like, you know, like sort of an old school we used to like thirty school would get taken over by a property developer, mm. and then they keep the, the facade. But then what they do is they make one apartment in there, and that would be the show apartment. Yeah. So I was the guy that used to go in and get paid a lump. Of, like I'd get a lump sum, like know, five grand or something. And I'd have to do a Rothko imitation, right, on the wall, big Rothko. I'd do some little birds, a couple of kind of Jura sort of sketches. You know, I was, I was kind of, um, I'd, kind of I'd, paint, I'd, I'd paint like a blue kind of canvas with a couple of red dots on it, yeah. so it would go with the cushions. Do you know what I mean? And I'd yeah. just get paid money, and, and it was good. But I did these drawings of um, these little birds, 
And someone saw him and said, oh, I'm opening a shop. Do you want to put him in the shop? See how it goes. I went, okay, yeah. So that's, that's how I really got sort of started with the, the figurative stuff. Because up until that point, I kind of had a gallery here and a gallery there, but nothing, mm. nothing you know, with any longevity. And it was, uh, someone came in and saw the birds and said, does he do dogs? And it was literally, I, I, I did this, this dog called Trevor. Yeah. Uh, it was a smooth fox terrier with a really fucking long nose and really sharp teeth. And he fucking bit me. Like, it was like, under the table, fucking bite me. Like, <laughs> and at that point, I had a massive camera, this massive digital camera, thinking, yeah, that's what you need, that's what you need. And I couldn't get fucking in, folks kept moving. It was a fucking nightmare. Um, and now I've got a tiny camera it's all about a tiny camera because dogs fucking hate it they don't, they don't like things in the face well some dogs do but yeah. anyway so that's why I'm, ram- I'm rambling uh, <laughs> so, so anyway I, I did Trevor for this lady called Elizabeth Holton um, and she was friends with Rebecca Hossack so she sent she made this this, this painting into a Christmas card mm. sent it to Rebecca Hossack gallery and she called me up and said do you want to come and be our dog painter and I was like really Oh, okay, yeah. And then I had like two, three shows with her, but um, I don't want to say anything bad about her because she's evil. I mean, not she's not evil. Yeah, she's. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she's. Uh, anyway, we split company about three years ago. So uh, yeah. Anyway, another question. That's I, brilliant. I ramble. No, so. no, I, I, I love it. I love um, <laughs> the best thing. She sort of asks these questions, and then people get. I like the sidetracks are the, the really interesting. <laughs> slip, like, slip off into it's the. Great. Yeah, it's, it's just. It's great. Yeah, I think. It's I love it. <laughs> so then, well, so you just followed it through, and you just, did you well, I followed. So I had, a, I did an A to Z of dogs, um, which was, uh, which was a, quite a simplistic thing. I just thought, well, if I do an A to Z of dogs, um, people like alphabets. I mean, you know, this is when this is. So I, I'd done a few dogs, hadn't done that many commissions, mm. um, and sold quite, quite well. But they were kind of on shit canvases. They were on, you know, everything was kind of a bit shit. Yeah. It, the pictures were great but what I realised is I was, I, I, I'd got like a 100 pound canvas really heavyweight kind of semi pro canvas yeah. and I'd paint on it and then I'd get a, a 2, 3 dollar shit canvas and I'd paint on that yeah. and people didn't care about what the back looked like you know yeah. and it's only recently that, that I've been with Cricket which is uh, in uh, Chelsea yeah. and they were like you need to frame this you need to do that you need to do this it needs to be this weight canvas because people are about it's about money you know, it's about weight it's about expectation it's about you know what they're getting for their money and okay. I'm thinking really surely it's just about the image surely isn't it I would no. have thought so yeah, yeah. well as know. artists you yeah. think that yeah exactly so now I'm painting on wood so okay. I can fuck off yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway so um so what was I saying? I'm right now. I'm off. On, I'm rambling again. No, Sorry. no. It's just I just I just really find it really interesting how you got into doing this, and, and it's and it's such a cool thing to sort of be recognised for. But there's such. How do you sort of assess? Do you ever have arguments with a dog owner about you know, misinterpretation or not misinterpretation, but different interpretation of a dog's personality? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I've got some stories about that. Well, I did. It's a woman called Dora Frumpkin, right? Yeah. And I was in New York, and I was doing something. Uh, this was a while this was about five years ago and I, was, I, I did a drawing um, of her uh, boxer mm. uh, and I thought it was spot on I mean it was it was cracker yeah, yeah. brilliant boxer brilliant. boxers yeah right 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 yeah. you know and I'm thinking they're great I got everything right everything was bang on right yeah. and then she said to me this is like my dog where's the joie de vivre the what the joie <laughs> de vivre and I said it's a fucking boxer <laughs> You they're a miserable mean. looking fucking dog I mean it's not like they're smiling and they got this sparkle in their eyes oh my <laughs> god she was like so that was I mean boxers are you know they're beautiful to look at but their eyes are like they're sad they're fucking sad yeah. they're like sad bastards so are fucking basset hounds uh Coon hounds, you know, all the ha- basically hounds look sad. Yeah, the, and it's the sadness of which them. Which is funny because there's the boxers are nutters, but but then they, they look so solemn they that they catch you off guard. Yeah, <laughs> they're always looking. They're all right. <laughs> so um, I, I don't know. I'm uh, so you know, and then I've had people saying, "Well, you haven't got the eyes quite right." I mean, I did a Bruce Oldfield, you know, the the fashion designer. Yeah, 
he had a had a dog called uh, Babe. It was a, a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Yeah, nice dogs. Oh yeah, great, great dog. And he'd taken great, fi- you know, because he's, you know, because he's he's got a good eye. So he'd taken great photos. So I had great photos to work from. I changed that painting twenty two fucking times to the point, right, where I varnished it. He took it off me, right. And then a, a week later it said, there's a little white spot on his nose. Can you get rid of it? I said, well, oh, that's the God. light. I think you'll find that's the light reflecting. He said, can you make it grey? Oh. I went, <laughs> yeah, not a problem. Did you charge him any extra? Did the fuck? It was like, <laughs> it was, it was like pulling teeth. Um, so you do get the odd, very pedantic, very, very fussy yeah. client. Um, and, and what I, I have waves of them. I'll, I'll have a hundred percent success yeah. rate. Bang! They love it. They love it because it's my painting, yeah. and it looks a bit like their dog, or it looks just like their dog, you yeah. know. And then I'll get the ones where going, it doesn't look anything like my dog. Why are you, you know? Because yeah. I had a woman up in Edinburgh. I did three. She's got Maltese terrier and uh, uh, like sh- I don't know, the Shih Tzus. They're, they're, they're funny looking little things, but they're just little. They're like cotton wool buds with little black eyes. And stuff. Yeah. They're cute. Yeah. But um, oh fuck me, she was a nightmare. She it's like it's like people's kids, isn't it? You oh know, yeah, it's you know worse when, than people's kids. Is, is it? Is it worse? Yeah, yeah. because babies look like babies, don't they? It's yeah. like horses. I can't paint horses because they work the fucking same. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Dogs look different. Every yeah, dog there's no individuality to my horses. No. People might try and tell you that, but you, you don't. No. It's got you know they look. I love horses, but I can't paint them because they all look the same. I don't see any difference. Yeah, and it's I'm like, sure it's, it's you like have to be an expert, don't you? You do. It's like you say about. I grew up with a staffy, and I love that. I adore those dogs because they're all such nutters. Yeah, they are. Um, they're great. I mean, I've learned. I've learned over the last what five years of you know doing quite a lot of staffies that they are the nicest yeah. dog. Yeah, they get such a bad reputation. Don't they? Do you ever get caught out with a breed that you've never heard of? Is it, you, yeah, you, yeah. yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. Look, I just did. Um, I like Cat Kids, and I'm, I'm name dropping it. Cat Kids, Kids, and uh, okay. Oh yeah, uh, my girlfriend loves Cat Kids. Yeah, as well. yeah. I just did her dog, uh, which was a Celium Terrier, and I'd never heard of a Celium. So I had to find a good Celium Terrier. Yeah. Wow. Looks a bit like a sort of chunky, short-legged, sort of long, yeah, Westy. Okay, yeah. but but kind of longer snout and, and like kind of lot hair here. Quite cute. Yeah. Um, she was a good client. Yeah. Done. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Job done. She did. Yeah. She she was not at all difficult. It's funny. Some people. Are, it's, it's a lovely feeling, isn't it, when you get commissioned by someone who you know has just bought into you and loves what you yeah. do, and you could you struggle to go wrong in a way, unless you took the piss. You know, it's like. Well, unless you do a really bad painting, which which it, and the thing is, you know, I've got to the point now that you know it's that kind of ten thousand hour thing. You know, you. You know, I get in the zone with painting, so I get I get it done, and I'm the quicker I do it, the better it is. Oh, it's it always, really is, and, and, case, and yeah. you know, and I'm not overworking, and I'm I'm looking at it going fucking up, and I still when I still paint dogs mm. and anything sometimes I just don't know what I'm doing right till the end, and all of a yeah. sudden it just goes boom, and it's it's magic. It's like oh, where did yeah. that come from? I still I still <laughs> am a bit like shit. I did that. Yeah, you know, and that's a nice thing. I I haven't got into that repetition um, kind of. You know, where you're just bored of it. I still find it, you know, when I'm, I'm popping eyes in, you know, like uh, just dotting the eye or, or just getting the nose right. Or it, it, I don't know. It's just something quite, yeah. quite it's exciting. A, it's such a good feeling when you put it, that crucial it, marker it, in it and you it like it. It doesn't. It, it just goes, boom. Yeah. I jumps always, out the camera. I kind of do that. I always do I think now that I think about it, I have like a habit of, I, I do that and then I'll kind of go and have a cup of tea, have a little break. And it's like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Little, just a little feel yeah. good sort you of You just got to get away from having fag. Yeah, yeah, yeah have a fag. <laughs> and then look back at it from a distance and go, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then you send it to the client and they hate it. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? And, that, and yeah. that's when I start thinking, right, I need a gun. <laughs> need a gun. Uh, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> but uh, so you so you've moved to New York quite recently. Yeah, I moved yeah. to New York last uh, September, um, and uh, funnily enough, it's been a strange sort of up and down. Yeah, you know, because I had a great setup in London, a great studio in uh, Southwark. Um, I've been kind of, I've been in the studio for about six years, seven years. Just kind of as I as I was kind of coming up with the dogs, um, you know, everything kind of worked, and I'd have like. People would come see me because I'd, I'd have kind of a good London base, and then there'd be a few people outside from the country with the obviously with the country houses and the dogs and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then I had a, a, a few clients in LA, a few clients in New York. Not that many in New York, not as many as I'd like. But I'd had a show here. Yeah. So I was kind of sort of known, and I'd, I'd been in a couple of uh, 
trendy dog magazines, you know, Bark. The Bark. bark. The Bark. The Bark. It's a good mag, actually. Um, if you like dogs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, so, so I thought by coming here, you know, by giving everything up and coming here, it would be quite a simple sort of thing. But it's been, it's been like sort of starting from scratch again, funnily enough. You know, yeah. I've, I've got a few clients here and a few clients there. And, yes. But it's... Um, do you still do a lot of stuff for people in UK? Well, that's right. I've, well, I've got two shows coming up in September, so I'm going to be in London in September. Oh, brilliant. Okay. For, um, oh, we'll catch up with you. Come on. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I've got one at uh, one in Chelsea, which is my gallery in in, in um, Park Walk, which is not far from Chelsea Football Ground. Fantastic. Um, and that runs for... Oh, they've got a wag the tail, meet the artist day. Brilliant, brilliant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. I mean, the problem with those things is it's great if you've got one dog and you're having a chat with the owner and there's a dog, but, you know, if there's 20 dogs, yeah, invariably there's a fight or some shit or some <laughs> pissing. Do you know what I mean? It, dogs are just slightly unstable in, en masse in the a very fancy dogs. gallery. Um, wow. So I can see that that, that being quite, um, quite challenging for the gallery owner, not necessarily me, because I'm going to have to wear some jeans. I'll and come some... along and we'll do part two live on the day, like record. Well, you should, you should. Yeah, you should. That'd be funny. Um, and I think I might wear some big boots just in case I get um, shat on. <laughs> um, Tremendous, but um, yeah. So, so I've got yeah, I've got a show show there in September, and I've also got another show of, of other things, uh, which is in uh, Mayfair in uh, mm. Duke Street, St James. But uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. Go on. Any more? So I, I no. I mean, I you I mean, I'm sat looking at three of your paintings now, and it's such a distinct style. But I I, I was looking through your drawings on um, on your website, and I think I remember seeing that you. Did you teach life, life drawing? Right? Did life drawing yeah. uh, and back I, in the... And it, as soon as I saw them, I, I, and I read that, it made complete sense because life drawing was such an um, activator in my current drawing style that really kind of helped me turn the corner and appreciate the simplicity and, as we were saying, not just yeah. quite quick marks. Yeah. Make quick marks. Yeah. And your stuff, it looks, the drawings look so kind of naive, but it's, it, it never is. And it's and they're such strong drawings. I love, um, I love stuff. Which ones are you talking about? These... Sort of the, what, those these ones are, are those just, or? they're just black line just no just black lines play a black background that's oh those perfect. ones yeah. oh that oh they yeah look, they that, look charcoal the, they look like the charcoal um, oh no they're they're screen prints yeah um, where are they yeah, oh they're screen wow I think they're screen prints if if that's the same ones as as your uh, oh. yeah so these these were sketches and then they're and beautiful. then and then they just went and then obviously the writing was separate and then you just put it on a and then screen yeah. they were screen prints so they, these are all screen prints editions of 40 but I did this box but of course the box I mean it's like I think it's about 500 quid this box oh I've really made. well what's the material it's just linen on a yeah. but I got it done at Wyvern do you know Wyvern um, no, no, printers no. in Clarkerwell they're, they're really quite fabulous oh okay um, it's like um, for people who are listening it's like a grey Linen box, really beautiful, with a lovely. Um, yeah, it's kind of like a, a dog's design on the front. Yeah, it's like it's like a, it's like a you know when you take a, the, the sleeve off of a hardback book yeah, cover. Yeah, yeah, it's it's Actually, it's basically yeah, that's, that. That's it's exactly what it is. Yeah. yeah, which is what I wanted, you know. And then that's a demboss on the front of, of a design, and yeah. But the, the plate, I think, cost a hundred quid just yeah. to put on. You know, and I used it once. Yeah, um, you know, but. Yeah, you can see these. These these are kind of quite. But just that to see that straight away, you've just captured that moment of when the dog stops and looks at you. That moment of realization, and then they either run at you or run off, or they do something. Yeah, yeah they do something. Yeah, it screams. It screams that moment at me. That one. You know, the but, ears are pricked. The the ready. It's just. But I mean, yeah, these these were done specifically for. So so I had these all. Uh, it's no point going through the whole lot because it's it take it take forever. Um, and also got to get them out. Fuck, it's a pain in the ass. This box hasn't been open for about two years. Um, <laughs> but. Um, so that that was a show in in London in um, 2011, mm-hmm. 2012. I can't remember. So they were all framed, and I think I sold. I think I'm, well, of an edition of forty of those. Uh, I think I'm probably about twenty five deep in both. Yeah. Uh, in, in all of them. So you know, I've sold a lot of prints. I've still got loads of them left. Yeah. But it's funny. You go way. You, you have waves of selling. Yeah. Because they they sold in Liberty. Liberty did uh, 2012 they were in Liberty for six months they had a print department in Liberty uh, along with the Olympics when the Olympics were on yeah and they did it specifically for um, the tourists yeah and well, we sold well they bought them directly from me so it was kind of like it was it was quite handy you yeah know? so you just give them like 50 pictures and they'd give you like 
money. Fantastic. Great. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of these fucking sale and return shit, um, which is, which, you know, which you have to do sometimes. That's it, yeah. Um, I'm on going down that road with the book at the minute. You know, it's like yeah, uh, Tate yeah. Modern took 10 copies on it, and I'm like, yeah. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Great step forward, but I keep sort of popping in when I'm walking past. To see, see how many left, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. I think, have they reduced them or have they gone? You know? Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I used to go to Liberty every once a week to see how many they got, you know, and I go, oh, fuck, I know they've sold fifty, brilliant, great, and they want yeah. another order. It's like when you hang around, at, you know, when you're first starting out and you're part of a collective at an exhibition, yeah. and you hang around and someone's looking at, like, oh, what that? Yeah, yeah, it's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where's the red dot? Yeah, so fucking, I used to go, I used to carry a packet of red dots just in case you know because it's always good to put a red dot up there just to get people interested you know what, yeah, you know like what? make people think it's special yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah I've uh, no, I always <laughs> fucks up at some point doesn't it you end so up buying your own work yeah <laughs> so right, it's two questions what is who's the most famous person that you've done a dog for and who is what's the most surprising client that you've done uh, um, the dog? most famous god I don't know like Kate Moss probably yeah yeah Kate That's Moss uh, <laughs> I would say Oh no, I've done, I've done, I didn't meet Fergie from Black Eyed Peas, but I, um, her husband sent me a picture of the dead Dachshund, Meatloaf. Okay. Meatloaf? <laughs> Meatloaf, the dead Dachshund. And uh, I, um, so I, I sent the picture back and she was very happy. Uh, but I've never met her, but I went, I met Kate Moss. Yeah. And uh, that was quite uh, entertaining. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's quite entertaining. She's a character. Oh, she's a character, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice dog as well. Yeah? Yeah, Archie. That's cool. It's really cool. And what about the most surprising? I mean, have you ever sort of, you know, thought, where have you found me? Like, how have you? Uh, I don't know. I, it's funny. I, I just think people. I think people have got either a kind of se- serious love of dogs, and so they, they, they you know, they'll, they'll, they'll be aware of yeah. dog painters. Yeah. Um, but no, surprising. No, I don't. Uh, I don't really. <laughs> or a dwarf. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Or, or a small person, any small yeah. person, yeah. But uh, no, I, I don't, um, <laughs> you know, because uh, they like to ride great things, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> I'll show the, inter- like the internet what others believe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd like to paint uh, a dwarf on a great day. No, um, I don't know, no, I haven't, um, I don't know, no, I think most people are um, just just pretty, pretty kind of normal. Yeah, that's really cool. So, you, so where's... Um, Where's the, be- where's the best place to see your work? You've got an agent, right? Or have you got an official site? I don't have an agent, um, which I'm kind of... I used to have an agent, um, but then she's retired. She wasn't that old, but she's retired. Okay. Um, so I'm kind of... Flo- I really like, like one here, actually. I really like one in New York, but I haven't really... It's quite difficult, because it's kind of... Because the dogs are so kind of in your face, Yeah. it's, it's hard to... To sort of, I mean, I did a book for Loewe. Did you, did you see? Have you ever seen that? No. I did a book for Loewe, which I don't have because they only gave me two copies, and I had to give one to the agent who she's kept it, and then I gave one to the printer. It was a, uh, I had to do. A, it was called Masters of Leather. Yeah. I went to uh, Madrid, and Barcelona for a month, and took photographs of all the people that worked at Loewe. Loewe is a, um, I suppose, <coughs> they're a Spanish luxury brand. They make. Um, really fantastic leather goods well they did now they still do but it's all changed there in the last few years but I did all the windows I did the window displays and uh, I did this this book leather bound book with uh, it was like a 12 colour process of sort of sort of fluorescent drawings and not dissimilar to your style actually kind of sort of okay, yeah, sketchy yeah. Yeah. Um, but with big blocks of uh, sort of fluorescent colour behind um and they only made 500 copies. So I did that, uh, got paid quite well for that. Mm. It was a good, really nice job. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of, you know, so I kind of had an agent when I was doing that. She got me the job and it was great. She, she worked out the deal and said, so you know, that was handy. But um, but then the dogs took over again after that. So, yeah. you know, it's funny because I kind of, I'd rather be more widespread, but, but you know, dogs keep holding me in mm. this position of, of kind of you know and that's why I'm doing this this show yeah. of the fashion paintings which are kind of my yeah 30 years of seeing strange people walking around they're really lovely actually they're, they're very abstract and what, what medium have you used they're like black canvases with well they're no the wood oh they're wood okay, they're, they're wood the, the, they're gloss, wood. the they're, gloss that sold me they're wood they're, uh, they're just pieces of wood um, 
Seven Polite, which is good here. Home Depot is brilliant. So, yeah. Oh, and a cut it in the foyer. And um, and then it's acrylic on on um, on the wood, and then varnish with a really really heavy duty gloss varnish. Nice. Gives them a nice finish. It does. Yeah. I yeah. mean. Um, but I mean, so the, the show's called Fashion, and, and these are just outfit one, two, three, four, okay. up to 16. I'm about to do some more, actually. Fantastic. So, where, so where's the best website for people to check out your work? Well, the best website is uh, robertjamesclarkart.com. Cool. Um, and um, that's basically it, really. Brilliant. And the last part of the show, I always, I always ask this question, and I call this bit the shark in the tank section, just because I'm a... I really love Damien Hurst's work. And, mm. and what I ask Perth to is just to name, it, whether it's a current favourite or all-time favourite, just creative output. It could be a film, a poster, a book, a stage show. Just something that kind of really drives you or inspires you or you just really love for whatever reason. Um, well, currently, it's Oscar Schlemmer, to be honest. You know, the Bauhaus. Guy. Okay, yeah. The, um, he did costumes for ballet and stuff. But... Um, that kind of inspired me. I remember, I remember being on Foundation, actually pre-Foundation, and we watched a film on Bear House. Yeah. And uh, I thought that was... Uh, and it's funny, you know, like, I get kind of waves of, of nostalgia, but sort of, it's not sentimental nostalgia. It's kind of like, oh my God, that, that meant that then. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's yeah. sort of like a, a, a new realisation of something that you learn a long time ago yeah. that you've kind of it's always been there but then you just go oh shit well, that's it. thank that's, you very much and again that's a conversation we're having about the 10 year thing it's like sometimes that's there but you won't ever activate it until yeah. you've got to that certain level or you've seen that thing whatever yeah. that yeah. is and yeah. it's just putting that into perspective and I think you know as you get older you start putting things in, in, yeah. in, in into yeah. perspective and, and things make total sense yeah. whereas you know I think in your kind of in my what am I what did my other gallerists say to me I think you're a mid-career artist Oh, what the fuck is that? Mid-career wow. artist. Mid-career. Is that the artistic equivalent? Is that a midlife crisis for artists? Yeah, I don't know. Midlife crisis. Yeah, mid, uh, mid, mid-career mid artist meaning you're not successful enough. <laughs> yeah. You know, so... Yeah. Um, but yeah. I think, I think you know, I found sort of... You know, I always had that kind of feeling I was going to do some pictures like this. And I kind of did pictures like this probably 20 years ago, but it's now that they're really honed and tight and, yeah, know, yeah. and I know why I'm doing it mm. and that's, that's I suppose what comes with, yeah. with age well it's interesting so when I first moved to London um, one of the things I wanted to do to, as, a, as a way of exploring um, just the city and seeing areas that I might not mm. have otherwise seen and I started doing it in Manchester was just getting out for a day with my camera unplanned get lost somewhere mm. um, photograph things in the street that, that people overlook could be a kebab tray it could be a cigarette but yeah. whatever just something that took my interest that I yeah. found made that sort of street quite British, which is something I appreciated by sort of spending time in New Zealand and coming back to England. Mm. And um, so when I came to London, I started to just get on tubes and go to these stops you've never heard of in Zone 5. Yeah, 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 yeah. And just, brilliant. Yeah, just yeah. get out and, and photograph things, but then represent them in a really kind of stark, two-colour, quite ink drawing. And I just loved the simplicity of doing that. And I, I didn't fully understand what I was doing or why I was doing yeah. that. I just enjoyed it. And, um, and then I went to Rome with my girlfriend and we went to an Andy Warhol retrospective of course, I know very much of his work, but never really sort of fell in love with the, the stuff. Well, his or, drawings. His but drawings read the, it, yeah, read the description, and it, it and it, it was a, that thing of you know the Campbell suit thing. It was just representing something in its simplicity in yeah. your world. Yeah, it mon- is, the it, mundane. It is what it is, yeah. and and this activator just went drum, and I went. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. That's yeah. that's exactly what yeah. I'm trying to do. But in very much a, you know a yeah. long time in after it, Warhol, yeah. and yeah. and in a very contemporary London sort of way, and. It's still a process that's just began, but it's had a really nice reception so far. But well, that, it did take time, you know, and it's only now that it's gone, switched on, and I saw that description and gone, yeah. fuck, that's, that's it, yeah, you know, that's what Genius. I'm going for, yeah. So, Well, you're only young, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you're a young lad. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Be so. back. Oh, <laughs> Brilliant. And one more, actually, one it's a really silly question. Do you ever see that? Do you ever see white dog mess in New York? <laughs> I don't think I've seen white shit. I have not seen white shit for probably you don't see any more, do thirty you? years. Is it what they fed them in the eighties, or is I it? I don't just... know. <laughs> chalk? Did I eat a lot of chalk? I don't know. I don't know. I honestly have not seen white I dog know, shit yeah. since I was a kid. Really, yeah, it's not just me then. Yeah, it's no, a, uh, yeah, that's interesting. No. Cool. Well, all right. Well, that's I think that, that'll do it. Thanks well, thank you very much. Right, thank yeah. you. Really, Great to meet you. Really good to talk to you. <laughs> oh god how can you not love a guy like that um total eccentric in the best possible way i had a lot of fun with robert and we went out for beers later that evening and uh it all got a bit messy but um what else are you gonna do when you're with a guy who's gone through college in the 80s uh 
Is it, it's going to going to end that way? We had a we had a little chat before we started recording the show, and we you know we were discussing that feeling you get when you go to college and suddenly you go from having to put your hand up and ask if you can go to the toilet and nine times out of ten getting told no at school and then you're in corridors with styrofoam coffee and cigarettes and whatever else you're doing at at college going to pub at lunchtime and he took me back to that Robert's uh, Robert's a kind of a guy who he's all he's the stereotypical artist in a lot of ways you know he's Great on the beers, great on canvas, and how can you not love a guy who's painting scruffy, scraggy, organic dogs for celebrities? How does that, you know, that's that's what that's what that's what you should be in the arts for. That's that's the stuff, you know. These are the stories, the people you want to meet. You've got stories to tell, uh, and that's what we're looking for on this show. So get your get your ideas over who who you come across that you'd like to listen to, because that's what we want to know. We want to uh, want to build an audience around this thing, and we want to you know we want to blaze a trail of all these crazy crazy people so hit us up on the twitter at arrest all mimics arrest all mimics gmail.com and illustrationweb.com the usual channels and look forward to being with you next time plenty more characters to come where robert came from see you all later Arrest all minutes.